whenever I decide to play Pyro, I usually just stick with the stock flamethrower. I consider it the best option if you want to perform at maximum capacity. The back burner and the degreaser and the phlogistonator are options, sure, but they provide little incentive for me to ever use them. Consider the back burner, which lets you deal critical hits from behind, whose hit registration relies on what the game considers to be a very loose definition of the word back. When the situational crits register, it's really good. Otherwise, you chew through your ammo after a couple of air blasts and are left scrambling for an ammo pack. Ah yes, consider the degreaser, which increases your weapon switching speed for swift and vicious combo attacks whose switching speed doesn't matter all that much anymore, because in the Tough Break update, they increase the base switching speed of all weapons, meaning you can combo nearly as effectively with just the stock flamethrower without having to sacrifice afterburn damage or extra ammo when air blasting. And of course, how could we forget our beloved Phlogistonator, the one that swaps out one of the Pyro's main sources of damage and influence, for nearly free critical hits on demand that one, lock you in place during activation, making you a sitting duck, and two, are only effective inside of narrow choke points and against brain dead players. Or if you have a medic paying rent to reside in your ass. I have no reason to use anything other than the stock flamethrower. But the Dragon's Fury. This weapon has grown on me a little bit, only recently though. I'm a creature of habit and a pretty nasty one at that, and when this weapon was released in the Jungle Inferno update, I played with it for about eh, 30 some odd minutes, I didn't like it, I put it down, and I didn't touch it again. Until, you know. Which made me so bored out of my goddamn mind that I picked it up again. So, after playing with the Dragon's Fury for about a year, I figured I'd make a sort of guide, analysis, review, thing, whatever the hell you want to call these videos at this point, for the Dragon's Fury, and describe my experiences with it. That's, a, that's enough of this long-winded introduction. Let's get this show on the road, people! Let's rock this joint! Yes! First and foremost, the Dragon's Fury is not a flamethrower. It's a fireball shooter whose projectiles behave more like rockets rather than flame particles. They have a fixed hitbox size and velocity, rather than a variable stream of individual particles whose velocity is partially dependent on that of the pyro. Like rockets, the fireballs can be reflected by other pyros, deleted by the short circuit, why, and are destroyed once they hit a surface. However, the fireballs do retain some flame particle properties, in that they have a fixed lifespan once they spawn, creating limited range, and they can pass through multiple players or buildings, dealing damage as they move through each target. And, as you can see here, the Dragon's Fury has very slight damage ramp up and fall off. When you hit a burning player, your damage is tripled, but the mechanics as to how this bonus damage is achieved are a bit strange. As it turns out, the Dragon's Fury deals less damage on non-burning players, not bonus damage on burning players. We can observe this when we shoot a building. All weapons in TF2 only deal base damage to buildings, which are not subject to damage ramp up or fall off. The base damage of the Dragon's Fury is actually 75, not 25. Kind of weird, but hey, it works. But you only get this bonus damage if the center of the fireball contacts a player's hitbox. This weird caveat was added about half a year after the Dragon's Fury was put in the game, and I think it was a bit unnecessary given that they nerfed the overall size of the fireball hitbox too, but hey, this makes you work for that bonus damage, so... I'm okay with it. Now, the most interesting stat by far about the Dragon's Fury is that when you land a fireball, center or otherwise, you get a briefly boosted firing rate. The general strategy is to chain consecutive attacks together, dishing out massive amounts of burst damage. Now, finally, afterburn from fireballs behaves in a similar fashion to that of normal flame particles. The longer a player is in contact with fireballs, the longer the afterburn. One fireball gives you about three seconds of 
afterburn, and anything more than two gives you the full eight seconds of afterburn. And on enemy pyros and Darwin's danger shield snipers, afterburn lingers for exactly one tick, letting you chain fireballs on these targets as well. The only written downside to this weapon is an air blast delay, which reduces your air blast interval from 0.8 seconds to 1.6 seconds. Man, that... That was a lot to get through, just to show the functionality of the Dragon's Fury. And after all of that, you can see just how strongly this weapon contrasts with the Pyro's other primaries. I akin this mechanical contrast of the Dragon's Fury to that of the Huntsman for Sniper. The Huntsman is a completely different weapon compared to the Sniper's other primaries. You swap out lightning fast, insta-kill across the map hit scan for a slower projectile with an arc. The only similarities between the Huntsman and any sniper rifle is that they have increased damage on charge and both can headshot. Similarly, the Dragon's Fury swaps out a stream of flame particles for high damage projectiles that you have to aim. The only similarities between the Dragon's Fury and any other flamethrower is that they both set people on fire and have air blast. With both of these weapons, you have to completely change how you play the class in order to use them effectively. For some reason, I think many pyro players have a hard time acclimating to the idea of a different weapon for pyro. I think many players expect the Dragon's Fury to function like a flamethrower, try to use it like one, and then put it down out of frustration when they can't effectively achieve the pyro meta. This is the most common complaint that I hear about the Dragon's Fury, so let me try to shed a different light on this weapon. The normal pyro meta is this offensive support supportive, defensive class thing. The Pyro relies on surprise attacks, flanking, and air blasting to make up for his flamethrower's lack of power, and to close the distance to use his burst damage options. He can also puppy guard small areas, like engineer nests, to ward off spies, ubered players, and wayward projectiles. And on occasion he can waddle into the enemy team holding down mouse 2 and deny enemy uber pushes or projectile spam. And when you play Pyro, you combine all of these aspects together, to varying extents depending on your playstyle, in order to play effectively. The normal pyro is this jack of all roles, but an expert in none. Circling back to the Dragon's Fury, if you're using this weapon, you can't play the normal pyro meta. It's an entirely new weapon that changes how you need to play the pyro. As a subclass, as popular terminology would label it, like the Huntsman Sniper, or Demo Knight, Fat Scout, Gunslinger Engineer, etc. But for some reason, the idea of a pyro subclass throws people off. I've floated this idea towards other players, and they look at it and go, I don't buy this for a hot second, Josh. You're, you're trying to shove some shit down my throat. Perhaps it's the short lifespan of the Dragon's Fury relative to other subclass weaponry, meaning players haven't had enough time to accept the idea of a pyro subclass? Or perhaps it's that the Dragon's Fury looks too similar to other flamethrowers? I'm not too sure. Either way, I consider the Dragon's Fury pyro as a subclass, because it transforms the pyro into an offensive Brute, whose mechanics and playstyle are completely different than that of a normal pyro. Now, mechanically, three key aspects of the Dragon's Fury enable this new offensive subclass playstyle, whatever you want to call it, I guess. One, the raw damage output alone is 20% higher than that of any flamethrower. Two, Fireballs have the fastest projectile speed in the game, which, over a shorter range, and with a relatively large hitbox, means that your burst damage has some scary attack power. And three, this is the most important one, the range of the Dragon's Fury is 80% longer than that of any flamethrower. Nearly double. These three things put together let the Pyro pick more aggressive fights and win. For example, the Dragon's Fury fucking annihilates scouts. Usually, hitscan weaponry in general is a strong counter to pyro, and scout is of no exception. Normal flamethrowers just aren't fast enough to take hitscan classes down, unless followed up with some seriously good flare gun or shotgun aim. But the Dragon's Fury can two-shot scouts, just as fast if not faster than they can two-shot the pyro, and pyros can do so at greater ranges than the scout can. The faster projectile speed lets pyros catch scouts mid-air or mid-strafe, and thanks to the Dragon's Fury's increased range and selection of secondaries, scouts can't take their sweet-ass time chipping away at health from a distance. They either have to take the fight directly to you, or bail out, 
or die. It's insanely satisfying to shut down cocky scouts with this thing. Oh, oh, did you see that? Hold on. That's nasty. That's fucking nasty. Okay. All right, so I hit the scout with the score shot, popped him in the air, I hit him with the dragon's fury, and then he fell down on the descending scorch shot shot because it was a direct hit. Hell, the Dragon's Fury is devastating in general. Against tankier hitscan classes like heavies, your DPS is so high that you can just chew through their health. You can keep at a safe distance and fire away as you bob and weave to avoid their attacks. Four shots for a heavy, and that is still really fucking fast. Thanks to the hitbox size and the fact that fireballs pierce enemies, your crowd control capability skyrockets. You can shred through medic combos, groups of players, and even buildings by chaining fireballs through multiple targets. More targets in a tighter area means a higher chance of landing consecutive shots, keeping your firing rate up, your bonus damage up, and the pressure on the enemy high. The Dragon's Fury is also very strong against other pyros. That lingering afterburn lets you chain fireballs for bonus damage on them too. In fact, you can consistently take down other pyros faster with the Dragon's Fury than any other flamethrower. No more derpy pyro battles where the winner is determined by how many flame particles make their mark or who has a shotgun. Hell, this thing even beats a shotgun unless they're right in your meat. The three other people playing. But the best thing, the best thing about this offensive capability, that the cherry on the Fempyro ass Sunday, two Fempyro jokes in one video, you're getting them both, is that the Dragon's Fury is the most devastating against engineers. Usually. Pyro is pretty useless against the Sentry Nest, unless he gets the drop on them with an uber charge, and even then, flamethrowers aren't all that effective at quickly taking down buildings, especially if they're being actively repaired or defended by other players. Also, the Homewrecker exists and we forget that it can two-shot any building in the game, but... He did the same joke about three times already. I don't think it's funny anymore. With the increased damage and weird damage design of the Dragon's Fury, you shred through engineer buildings like a river does to tissue paper. If you have a sentry gun to deal with and a Dragon's Fury pyro on your team, toss aside those reservations about Ubering pyros. A Dragon's Fury pyro can wipe a sentry nest off the map just as effectively as a soldier, a heavy, or a demo man. And all of these upsides are just from the primary weapon alone. That's because the Dragon's Fury prevents the Pyro from being overly reliant on supplementary damage from his secondaries and melee weapons. All of his damage is packed into his primary firepower. But... Secondaries are still useful with the Dragon's Fury. With normal pyro, you usually attack with your flames first and then follow up with a secondary or melee weapon. But with the Dragon's Fury, secondary weapons are best used the other way around. I find that the Dragon's Fury pairs best with the detonator and... Yes, the squirt shot. The general idea is to set your intended target or targets on fire from a distance and then follow up by pounding them with fireballs. The stock flare gun, however, isn't so useful. Not only does the lack of blast radius make it a weak ignition tool, but normal combo pyro is no longer necessary. Your comboing ability is built right into the Dragon's Fury. In the amount of time it takes you to perform a flare combo and then swap back to your primary, you could have already done more than twice the amount of damage Damage with just the Dragon's Fury. But hold on, we're coming way out of left field here with this one. The Man Melter is a pretty decent choice. You can extinguish teammates while avoiding that air blast penalty on the Dragon's Fury. You can then pop someone for 90 damage with those stored crits and follow up with a puff of death. Now, as for shotguns, unless you're right in the meat for max ramp up, there's really no point in ever equipping one. If you're at medium to close range anyways, the Dragon's Fury is gonna do more damage faster. And beyond the range of your fireballs, you're gonna deal more damage with any flare gun. And if by some unholy and masochistic reason you're using the Gas Passer, yes, you do tend to charge the Gas Passer faster with the Dragon's Fury than you would any other primary weapon. So, you can cycle this useless can of sadness more often. But I'm not done yet. Nope. 
Got more to go through. The Dragon's Fury also has knockback. If you aim at someone's feet, you can pop them in the air for a pseudo air blast effect, letting you combo them in mid-air. The knockback only works if the target's already on fire, since knockback scales with damage, and it doesn't work on heavies because of their higher knockback resistance. Also, because of the weird way that triple damage is achieved, critical hits with this thing are insane. On non-burning players, you deal 75 damage with a crit, but on burning players, you dish out 225 damage per shot. That's nine times the advertised base damage. Oh yeah, kind of a, an in-post thing here that I didn't mention. Since the Dragon's Fury fires projectiles, you can land air shots with it. Oh, Jesse, it doesn't count if it's not a rocket or a pipe, maybe a flare gun, but you can't do it with Pyro, you can't do it with Pyro, it's not a competitive environment, go and get air shots in 6v6 six, six mode, what are you talking about? You can't do that. Fuck you, just did it, don't care. Christ, that was, that was a lot to get through, and this time, just to show the upsides of the weapon. But the main point that I want to drive home is that with the Dragon's Fury, you are no longer this jack of all roles. You become an offensive powerhouse. The Pyro desperately needed this for a more interesting and feedback-oriented primary weapon. Regular flamethrowers just don't have a satisfying feedback mechanism, unless you combo or air blast somebody. But with the Dragon's Fury, your aim is rewarded with bonus damage, a faster firing rate, the sharp hiss of a fireball, the flashy flame particle animation. It's a very satisfying weapon to use. Is that alright? What? What's that? Now, on to the bad stuff. Well, not necessarily bad, but just kind of annoying. Valve had to balance out the burst damage of the Dragon's Fury, and they did so by gimping the normal Pyro's main source of burst damage, air blasting. Being able to repeatedly combo fireballs with the burst damage from reflected projectiles would be insanely strong. So I think an air blast nerf of some kind is absolutely necessary. But there is this really annoying problem, where if you misfire an air blast, you have an almost two second waiting period before you can use your weapon again, in any capacity. This just sucks, because if you mistime an air blast, you're kinda fucked. One second is a long time in TF2, especially when you can't attack. I've said this before. Personally, I think this should be changed. I think your primary fire should be available quickly after an air blast, like normal flamethrowers, but the air blast interval should remain roughly two seconds long. Or you can, you know, just remove air blast from this weapon entirely. You don't really need it with the type of play this weapon promotes. Plus, I find myself instinctively air blasting from time to time and crippling myself mid-fight. If you can't fight the temptation, just remove it, you know? Quit cold turkey. Another unfortunate side effect of this longer air blast cooldown is that pyros can't effectively deny uber or knock players around or reflect projectiles away from teammates, making the pyro significantly less effective in the defense and support departments. While the cooldown for reflecting projectiles is crucial, I think reducing the pyro's knockback ability is too much of a sacrifice to make. So perhaps a more creative solution to the air blast problem would be to make the air blast only affect players not projectiles, and then remove the cooldown altogether. This is just food for thought, not saying that any of these changes are the best. Unlike how so many people take other opinions of mine, oh, Zesty thinks that this change should happen, therefore he thinks it's the best and only one in his mind. Let's berate and attack him for it. So you know what? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. That's what they're there for. Gotta get those clicks, gotta get those clicky clicks, gotta drive those interactions up. Listen, if anyone does YouTube for a living, I am so fucking sorry. It, it's fucking disastrous. And I am genuinely interested in what you guys have to say. I love talking about this game. I like having civil discourse about it. So, you know what? Let me know what you guys think. Also, bursts of fire instead of a wide stream of flame particles makes the Dragon's Fury a very poor spy checking tool, further pulling the pyro out of the support department. You go from a precautionary spy checker to a reactionary spy killer, just like everyone else most of the time. But the biggest objective problem with the Dragon's Fury is that it's buggy. Really buggy. What the fuck? For example, Dragon's Fury fireballs just get deleted by other projectiles. Well, 
not deleted, but they end up doing no damage if they pass through certain entities, like rockets or syringes. So if you're a medic getting run down by a Dragon's Fury Pyro, just whip out any syringe gun and you can't die. So, hey, there's another reason to use the overdose if I didn't sell you on it before. I rarely experience this bug, however. Likely because the chances of a fireball coming into contact with another projectile mid-air are low. Except for syringes, but most medic players use the crossbow anyways, so that's of no concern. But this bug is not nearly as bad as the one that Shonik describes in this video. Certain map elements are grouped together in such a way that their bounding boxes far exceed where the collision holes of players actually interact with them. When certain entities come into contact with these bounding boxes, like fireballs, they simply get deleted. So on certain maps, you have these massive areas where some weapons will simply not work, including the Dragon's Fury. It's infuriating when in one moment you have a fight in the bag and then suddenly you can't shoot your fucking gun. Another minor problem with the Dragon's Fury is that fireballs utilize dynamic lighting. So as soon as they spawn, which is somewhere around your head, you effectively flashbang yourself. It's not pleasant, but thankfully, using pyrovision gets rid of this issue. They try to get you to play the game. This is such a visual clusterfuck, I cannot even begin to describe. <laughs> and uh, yeah, wow, that was a long one. My throat hurts now. Despite its strong- <laughs> that was- wow, that- mm. That, that's a statement up to interpretation, didn't even, that's not even scripted, that just came out. Wow! Where's my mind at today? Anyway, despite its drawbacks, I still strongly recommend that you give the Dragon's Fury a shot. It's a lot of fun to play with, and like every good unlock, the Dragon's Fury makes the Pyro stronger in some aspects, but weaker in others. I will admit, using the Dragon's Fury is a bit like riding with your non-dominant hand. You can get used to it, and get good with it. It's just very alien and uncomfortable at first. Thankfully, the Dragon's Fury is still good despite everything going against it, much unlike some of Pyro's other weapons. Just what the fuck are we supposed to do with these? Oh wait, I know! Know your fucking place, trash! 